In this video, we're going to cover some additional search strategies within Xcredit. We're going to look at how to look at what's within a thread, uh, how to find what questions related to a specific learning objective and how the performance has been on those questions. Uh, we'll examine how to uh, review and find overlap on a particular topic as well as gaps around a particular topic. And we're also going to review the structure of the competency tree and how that works into all the reports. So let's first start off and talk about threads. So the easiest way to locate things that are associated with a particular thread is to go into the advanced search window. Say if I'm, I want to look at all the learning activities related to biochemistry, for instance. Let's take a look at that. So you can see in this lower part of the area, we have lots of different keywords. Now the keywords uh, population uh, with learning objectives varies a lot according to system. Uh, but the thread tends to be reported pretty uh, accurately most of the time. So let's just uh, click on thread and then we'll click on biochemistry. And say if I want to generate a report uh, for this. I want to say I want to add my search results to my selections and uh, then I'm going to hit search. I'm looking through the entire first year of the curriculum right now. I'd, I'd already filtered it by that. Scroll down and there's what it found. Okay? So you can see the full list of all the learning activities that are in the biochemistry thread and then if I want to look at uh, that in a report format, click on my a history and selections and I can reduce this if I want by clicking into the X's and then I would click on uh, click on map report and say biochemistry thread year one okay and then hit submit and I say I want to look at the learning activities and the learning objectives and I get to choose what other things I want within my report. Let's say I want to know who the author is. I want to know what the system is. I want to look at the uh, duration. And I want to know the instructional method of the learning activity. And But for the learning objective, I just want to see only the learning objective. And I want to be able to view and download that and include that Word file. Generate my report. Okay. So here's my report. I can see it on screen. So I found 58 learning activities and resources. Huh? And then if I wanted to download that, I could click on that download link and it would open it up as a Word file. Okay? So that's how we find things related to uh, a particular thread. Okay, let's assume that we want to look at the performance of uh, students on the test items um, related to a specific learning objective. So you can find any learning objective uh, by browsing or searching. So let's uh, look at learning objectives that happen to be related to pain and pain management. See so on the left hand side we have our competency tree. I'm just going to browse down and click on pain and pain management. Take it a moment. I'm just looking now in the first year of the curriculum and you can see here's all the learning objectives in the first year uh, related to pain and pain management. Oh, excuse me, I clicked on the wrong link. Pain and pain management. And you can see the learning activities that are also linked to that competency. And now if I click on any one of these learning objectives, it'll give me the detail of that learning objective. So there's the actual learning objective here in the map competencies and questions. I can click on associated questions. It'll pop open a window. And here it shows that we do have one question associated with that learning objective. And it also shows us that this question has been used in an examination. And this is the performance of that question. Um, so you can see that uh, here's the potential answers, A through E, and in this table it shows us that uh, in the one instance of use of this question in that particular year, 131 students got it right, and then we had a distribution of students across the other answers, and we show the difficulty and discrimination indices. These are our statistical measures of the quality of the question. So that was by browsing. I'll show you by uh, searching. I'll search for a particular learning objective that's uh, associated with ketotic, T-O-T-F-C, and I'm going to hit search now because I, I know a specific thing that I want to see how the per they're performing on. So there's a single learning objective relating to that particular term, and I go down here and look at associated questions, 
And you can see, ah, okay, so there were several questions associated with this. The first one must have been just a practice exam question, or it just or it might have been used in previous years. It says it's not been used in any exam in this particular year. So notice we're, we are looking in just a single year at this point in time. Um, but down here we have a, a second question done by another author. You can see that this was done by Selena Nora Emily, and this was by Mary Kate Worden. And you can also see the create date and the keywords associated with it. And then you can see the performance associated with that particular question. Okay, So that's how we see uh, performance on any given uh, question as it's related to uh, learning objectives. Okay, next we'd like to look at how we identify overlaps around a particular topic. In other words, where something is taught in a similar way uh, multiple places in the curriculum. So let's look at a topic that happens many times in the curriculum, uh, diabetes. So I'm going to look at first, I'm going to look at my competency tree for diabetes. See where all that shows up in our competencies. This first way of kind of narrowing it down. So what is now being displayed here in the competency window are the parent competencies uh, and the child competencies uh, that are related to diabetes. So you can see underneath patient care, we have gather essential and accurate information. I'm going to click on competency here so we can see the whole window. Um, we have gather essential and accurate information, and then underneath that we have reproduction and development, and then you can see here we have diabetes and pregnancy. If we scroll on down, we also have competencies related to the endocrine system, specifically the pancreas, and you can see there's many different competencies that are related to that, and, and we're still underneath gather uh, essential and accurate information. As we scroll on down, you'll see there's another subheading under appropriate supervision, interpret lab data, imaging studies, and other tests required for the area of practice. This is a sub-competency uh, based upon what the AAMC uh, competency structure is like. Um, and you'll see that, again, we have diabetes and pregnancy, and then we have the endocrine. You think, well, this is a duplicate. Well, it is, but it isn't, because you see here we were looking at how to gather information around these topics, and the second one is, and then this is how do you interpret the data that you've collected. And if we scroll on down, you'll see a third heading, Develop and Carry Out Management Plans, again for these same subtopics of diabetes. And if we continue scrolling down, we also have Medical Knowledge, and you'll see that diabetes is repeated again here. So we have these, these two fundamental uh, areas of patient care and medical knowledge where the topics are repeated uh, multiple times. So that gives you some idea of the structure. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But let's assume for the moment that we're interested in medical knowledge related to type 1 diabetes. And we want to, because we're looking at the first year, and we want to see if there's a, a lot of overlap there in the first year. So I would scroll down here to uh, the area of medical knowledge, and I click on type 1 diabetes. I'm already filtered down to Med 1. You can see at an earlier stage I chose, I only am looking at the first year um, courses. So then I'm going to say I want to add this item and its children to my selections. Click on Add to my selections. I'm going to build a report now. And then I look at my selections and reports. And so now I have all the uh, learning objectives and learning activities uh, related to diabetes type 1 in the first year. And I can click on this report and say type 1, one in year 1. Okay, Hit submit. It generates a report. And I get to choose the specific things I want in the uh, report. I can say threads, duration, and so on, um, as well as with the learning objectives, and then generate the report. Okay? So that's one way uh, of looking for um, overlap. All right, so let's now take a look at uh, this competency tree in a little bit more detail. Okay? I'm going to click on Show All Competencies so you understand how this, uh, this tree is structured and how you might work with it in different ways. As I mentioned earlier, this competency tree is based upon uh, work that was done by a uh, large group of people at the AAMC uh, and then the uh, uh, University of Virginia School of Medicine took that and then localized it to fit our particular curriculum. 
Well, let's look at the basic structure of it. I'm going to collapse this by clicking the little minus keys here so we can look at the highest level of this tree. And you can see that we have a, uh, these as the major topics, patient care, medical knowledge, practice-based learning improvement, interpersonal and communication skills, professionalism, system-based practice, interprofessional collaboration, and personal and professional development. Now, underneath each one of these is a series of sub-competencies. So let's look at, say, systems-based practice, and you'll see that we have a half a dozen um, sub-competencies. And in these last few, like uh, interprofessional collaboration, you know, in, in professionalism, you're only going to find two levels to this tree, or sometimes three. Uh, but yeah, there's there's no little plus here in front of this, so you can that means that that you're at the bottom of the the tree. However, whenever you look under patient care and medical knowledge, the tree is very deep, as you would expect. So let's take a look under patient care. So and I'm going to collapse this next level so you can see the structure. Okay. So under patient care, we have six or eight uh, sub-competencies. Uh, so this first one relates to performing procedures. The next one is about gathering information. The next one is interpreting uh, lab data, imaging studies, other tests. So since it says imaging studies here, all uh, radiology falls underneath this particular sub-competency. Counseling and educating patients. Uh, under appropriate supervision, make informed decisions about the uh, interventions develop and carry out patient uh, management plans and provide appropriate referral and provide health care services to patients. Now underneath uh, many of these topics you can see that there's a, a little plus so we can expand that further. So whenever we look at gather essential and accurate information you'll now see that there is an organ system structure underneath that plus a few other topics that don't fit underneath organ systems. First, let's just collapse this down so you can see the organ system structure. So first, we have principles of patient care. Um, these are kind of overarching principles, such as the history and the physical, for instance. If we take a look there, history and physical exam. And then we also have a number of topics that are multi-systemic, like approach to the geriatric patient or approach to the patient with cancer. So because these topics uh, go beyond just a single system, they are put here underneath principles of patient care. Uh, but then you'll see that there these follow the uh, organ systems. Now these are not the same as the systems within the curriculum. Uh, this follows a structure that's found uh, across many textbooks uh, in terms of how these are organized. And of course, there's overlap in some of these areas, as you would expect. Uh, but then if you drill down within any one of these, uh, say, let's look at respiratory, uh, you'll see that there's a, a list of common uh, conditions and diseases uh, associated with the respiratory system. And you're going to find uh, some of these then uh, have subcategories uh, underneath them. Like here, we have a couple of different things in our sleep apnea. Um, so that's going to be the case for each one of the organ systems. Uh, there will be a, a varying length structure underneath there. Okay? Now let's take a look uh, also underneath uh, medical knowledge. Now I mentioned earlier that, that that structure is going to be repeated three times in terms of like the organ system structure is going to be repeated three times. Uh, it'll be first under gather essential and accurate information about patients and then how to interpret the data that you've collected and then develop and carry out uh, management plans. So that, that organ system structure will be underneath each one of these, as you can see here. And it's also going to be underneath medical knowledge. But there's also some material here that's not organ uh, system based underneath medical knowledge because we have the whole field of molecular and cellular medicine. Biochemistry falls underneath that. Uh, physiology will fall underneath that. Um, and pharmacology, the basic principles of pharmacology fall underneath that, uh, and genetics, as well as uh, cell and tissue biology, and then the pathophysiology. Okay, so then <coughs> you'll see the um, uh, organ systems then fall underneath uh, uh, those those categories. Okay. So that's the, the basic structure of the competency tree.
And whenever you go to run any report, uh, you also have the option of including the uh, competencies within your report. That's one more checkbox underneath both the uh, learning activities and the um, uh, learning objectives. Okay, so let's think about now how to identify particular gaps uh, within the curriculum. In other words, is do we have a particular topic covered uh, within the curriculum? So I'm going to choose a particular, uh, uh, in particularly narrow topic, mesothelioma. Okay, I'm going to search all my learning activities for that. Hit search, and it says, "Oh, I turned up nothing." You know, that that's related to. Well, let's try looking through the learning objectives for that same term. Search. Still turned up nothing. Hmm. So that you're beginning to wonder, is, is there really anything in the curriculum related to this? Let's go to a little bit more advanced uh, search. And it's, let's search the um, files. So this, this is probably the broadest based search that you can do within the system. Uh, in, when you're searching for the learning activity and resources. So this is actually searching through all the handouts, the PowerPoint presentations, everything that's been provided to the students in, in written form. And hit search. Now this search takes longer because you're going through literally uh, thousands or perhaps tens of thousands of pages of information. It's not just searching through all the keywords. And bingo, I found six files. Okay. So, and they are related to these particular uh, learning activities and resources. If I scroll on down, there are the actual links to the files, and you'll see that there's a short uh, uh, segment from the file that's included uh, with your re search result. And if you want, you can click on a, uh, any particular file, and it's going to open that uh, particular file. You're going to download it and open it. So if you want to look at, look at the details, you may do that. Okay? So you can see how I progressively widened my search. And initially, with that search, it seemed like that there was really uh, nothing in the curriculum whenever I just searched uh, by a keyword. Uh, but whenever I drilled down and, and, and broadened my search by searching through all of the uh, handouts, I was able to find that there is some material, and so I could now look through uh, each of these handouts and see how much coverage do we really have here? Is this the appropriate place to have it in the curriculum, uh, and, and how should that be managed in terms of curriculum design? So hopefully this gives you a few more techniques that you can use uh, whenever you're using XCredit to search through the curriculum database.